Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this video. Uh, so we're going to look at the Riemann problem for scalar conservation laws. In this video we're going to give an introduction, just a quick rundown. Um, we'll see an example with the Berger's equation and then we're going to look at how to exclude so-called bad solutions. Okay, um, And it's helpful to know um, how to draw characteristic lines and what is a weak solution. Um, it's not entirely necessary, but you'll be able to follow along better if you know those concepts. Okay, <clears throat> so we're just going to get into it. Uh, let's go ahead and look at what uh, the Riemann problem is. So it's our usual conservation law. But the difference here is that our initial our initial state is going to be u left and u right. So this is for x less than 0 and x greater than 0. OK, so this is the Riemann problem. And one of the important things to note here is that this is 1D problem. OK, the Riemann problem is always uh, a one-dimensional problem. Okay, so we're not taking the divergence of the flux. It's just a regular derivative, and we have a left and a right state. And it's probably also helpful to mention that we are going to assume that u left is not equal to u right. Okay, so, well, we want to find a solution to this problem. Okay, and, well, I have a claim. Okay, so what is my claim? My claim is that um, the solution, let's say a weak solution to the Riemann problem is the following. Okay, that is it's u of xt is equal to u left if x is less than s t and u right if x is greater than s t. Okay, and well, what is capital S here? So capital S, we're going to define it as f of u left minus f of u right over u left minus u right. Okay, so this is what I claim the solution is. No matter whatever the flux happens to be um, for the Riemann problem, this is a solution. Okay, and let's just draw a picture to give you an idea what's going on here. So if we draw in the, this is t and this is x, so in the xt plane, um, we just assume S is positive for now. We're going to have this line. This line is T equals to X divided by S. And on the left here, we have our left state. And over here, this is a right state. Okay. And so our solution, if you're to draw it, so U of XT, let's use a different color. Um, I have lost, uh, here it is. So uh, we'll draw it in blue. So our solution looks something like this. So here's u left, here's u right, just two different constant values. And it is moving, okay? It's moving with this speed s, okay? So this is what I claim the solution is. And well, I'm not going to check this. Um, I'll leave this as an exercise for you guys. Uh, it's not entirely relevant right now, but it will be a good exercise. So prove. Um, I will just briefly flash up the definition for a weak solution so you can look at that um, and see if you can work it out yourself. 
Uh, and again, I have another video on weak solutions, so you can check out that video as well to see an idea for how you would prove this, okay? So we're just going to move on from this, and we're going to look at um, a specific example, okay? So, of course, we're going to go with our favorite equation, the Burgers equation. This is ut plus the flux, one-half u squared, uh, spatial derivative equal to zero. And again, our initial state is just two different values separated at um, x equals to zero, okay? So a u left and a u right. Now we're gonna look at two cases, okay? So let's just start with the case one. So let's say that u left is equal to one and u zero, u right, sorry, u right is equal to zero, okay? We're also gonna have a case two and we're gonna flip it. We're gonna say that u left is zero and u right is one, okay? If we know this, we know our flux. We know our flux is f of u is equal to one half u squared, okay? And so if you remember, we wanna compute that s. We said that this was a solution. So we need to know what this s value is. So what is it? Let's see, s is one half u left squared minus one half u right squared over u left minus u right, okay? You just plug in the numbers and you're gonna see that this is uh, one half, okay? And same in case two, s will also be a half, okay? So it's a, it's a quick check you can do, okay? And well, we can draw our solutions for both of these. And so as you imagine, uh, the solution for both, let's draw them here. So u left is what? U left is one. So it's gonna look something like this and like that. And over here it's flipped. So we have zero like this like that, and then both of these equations are moving in this direction, okay? So why are we concerned? So if you remember, I said we want to exclude the bad solution, okay? Well, we need to know what is a bad solution. Um, and to do that, let's look at the characteristic lines um, for this problem, okay? So. We're gonna plot on the xt. And so for this first case, case one, if you're to work out the characteristic lines, so we're gonna have lines that look like this. They're gonna have slope one on the left side. And on the right side, you're gonna have uh, just vertical lines, okay? And your uh, a line here, this discontinuity, you're gonna have this discontinuity here. Okay, and this is the line t equals to two x. Okay, I'm gonna plot the characteristic lines over here. So in this case, the lines on the left side are all vertical, okay? And the lines uh, over here are, have slope one, okay? And so what happens is, well, you have, again, you're gonna have the same discontinuity, t equals two x, okay? And so all the lines, they're actually going to be coming out of this discontinuity with slope one on the right, and then the vertical lines on the left, okay? So you can obviously see a difference between these two graphs. So on the left side, 
your lines are all converging into the discontinuity as time moves on. And on the right side, the lines are moving out of the discontinuity. Okay, they are emerging from the discontinuity. And you should just ask yourself, which one is more physically relevant? Okay, I know this is all just math right now, but if you were to exclude uh, one of these solutions, which one would you exclude? Okay, and so the one we want to get rid of is actually case two. Okay, case two is not a good solution. Um, and the reason for that is these lines here. Um, so if you think about it in time, if we take any point, let's use, uh, say, gold. So if we take a point here, okay, we have a point in our solution space. This point will lie, will lie on one of the characteristic lines. So this characteristic line can be traced back to some point on the discontinuity. Okay, so what that's saying is that information, so the solution at some time, uh, came about from a discontinuity. So essentially, we had information being generated from, uh, you know, from nothing, essentially. So from whatever this discontinuity is. Um, and that, that idea is not physically relevant. So we, we're kind of generating information from nothing. Whereas if we look at the first case, um, all, the, all the characteristic lines, they flow into the discontinuity. So if you take any point in your solution space, say here, okay, it is going to, as time moves on, it is going to flow into the discontinuity. So whatever information you had on this line, it is lost into the discontinuity. Okay, and that is uh, a more physically relevant solution. Okay, so this solution is good and this solution is bad, all right? Um, the, I'll, I'll make another video about this some other time, but this is the idea of an entropy solution. So you, when you're solving these equations, you want to know what is the entropy solution, and that is going to be the physically relevant solution. Well, that's all great. That's fine and everything. Um, but let's just, you know, put down a theorem. Maybe you want to see some theorem uh, for, you know, how you can apply this to your own problem. Uh, what this is really saying is that your shocks, the characteristic lines are going to flow into that shock, okay? And so um, you notice we do need the function to be convex. Um, you can get a similar result if f is concave. It's just that all your inequalities are going to be flipped, okay? So you'll have this uh, instead, Okay, and so this, and again, if f is neither convex or concave, um, there's a whole different complicated business you got to go through. Okay, um, and there's also a good book. So if you want more information about this, there is a good book by uh, this guy, Lafloc. Okay, I'll leave a, a link in the description about uh, this book. Um, and also a book by Levesque, which is also pretty good. Let me write his name properly. Levesque. And again, I'll leave a link uh, for his book in the description as well. Um, and just to finish off, uh, well, if we have to exclude a solution, if this is not a good solution, um, what solution what solution is there? So what, what, what is the entropy solution? Um, and in that case, I'll have another video and we'll look into uh, not shock solutions, but uh, expansions. So we'll have to see how to find out what the expansion is. Okay, and that does it for the video. Uh, see you guys next time.